Compound shapes are a great way to apply Boolean operations in a non-destructive way in Affinity Designer. So why don't more people use them? Well, maybe this tool just needs a little more publicity. In this video, I'm gonna give you a crash course on the Compound Shapes tool, and maybe you'll even learn some tips to help speed up your workflow. So let's jump in. What's up guys, I'm Trent and welcome to my channel. Recently, I posted a video about creating a cutout text effect using the erase blend mode. I got some very insightful comments and some people mentioned another way to do it was to use compound shapes. So I thought that would be a good opportunity to make a whole video on compound shapes and how they can be used. But before we actually discuss compound shapes, let's do a quick review of the Boolean operations themselves. Once we get an understanding of them, it'll make compound shapes a little bit easier to understand. So let's review the Boolean operations first. So just to reiterate, the Boolean operations by themselves are destructive, which means they alter your shapes. So we will be essentially destroying our shapes as I just go through this brief intro, but later on when we do the compound shapes method, you'll see how it's non-destructive. So let's start with the add Boolean operation. So I have some shapes here, and if I select this square and this circle, what you'll notice is up on the top area, the Boolean operations become available. They're kind of grayed out by default. And since we're talking about add, I will click on the add button. Actually, I'll duplicate this first so you can see the original example. And I'll click on add. So what add is doing is it's basically taking the two shapes and making a new bigger shape out of them. And it's a curve as you can see here. The layering doesn't actually matter on the final shape. It does matter which of the display properties will get displayed in the, in the final result. So you see here the final result was red. Below, I have another example. It's the same thing except the blue circle is in the back. So let's see what happens if I select these and do the add operation. Now you can see they turn blue. So when you do the add operation, the shape that's on the lowest layer in your stack is going to influence the final look. But the overall shape isn't going to look any different. You know, this is the same as addition with numbers. You know, A plus B is the same as B plus A. That's why they look the same here. So add is pretty straightforward. Let's move on to subtract. What subtract is going to do is it's going to cut out the shape in front from the shape behind it. So I'll give you an example here. Again, we have our square and circle. And I'll copy them over here. Now with both of them selected, I'll click the subtract operation. And you can see that the circle was cut out of the square. Now let's go to the bottom one, duplicate it again. Now notice on this one that the square is in front of the circle. So I'm going to click subtract and I get a different result. So unlike add, the order of the layers in subtract matters a lot more. The layer that's higher in the stack is going to be subtracted from the layer that's below it. And like I said, add is basically A plus B. As we know with subtraction, A minus B is not the same as B minus A. So we do get a different result here. If you have a hard time remembering it, the icon kind of indicates here that the thing in front is being removed. That's how I always remember it. Okay, now things get a little more interesting with intersect. So what this is going to do is take the common area of overlap for our shapes. So let me show you how that works here. I'll unlock my layer, bring it over, and I'm gonna click this intersect button here. And with the icon, you can kind of see what it probably will do. And we get this common shape that is representative of where the two shapes are overlapping. And I'll do the bottom one. You can see that it's essentially the same. It's just it's just taking the properties of the color from the one behind it. Intersect is basically going to give you the same shape regardless of which way your layers are. One thing to remember about intersect is that you're not going to get any result if there's no overlap. So let me show you an example of that. Let's say I have these two shapes and I want to say what is the intersection of this red square and this blue circle. So if I click intersect, you actually get no result. So if you're ever trying to intersect things and there's no result, that could be the reason why. Let's look at that example one more time because with two shapes, it's very obvious when things aren't intersecting. But if I put in a third shape, let's see what intersect gives me with these three things. I'll click it again and there's nothing. So if you have some stray shape that's not intersecting anything and all the shapes you have selected, you're gonna get an empty result. So that could be a reason why you're not seeing what you're expecting. So if you're intersecting shapes, make sure all your independent parts are somehow overlapping somewhere. Next we have XOR or exclusive OR. And what this is going to do is on a superficial level, it's going to take the areas that don't overlap. Now there's a slight caveat to that I'll show later, but let's start with the simple example here. I'll select my two shapes after I unlock the layer. 
And as I do, let's copy them over. So these, this fourth one is XOR, so I'll click it. And you can see basically what happened is it took out this central area of overlap. Let's do another example, but in this example, let's do three circles. So I'll, whoops, I'll do a third circle here. Let's make it green just so it shows up a little bit. And I'll actually adjust the transparency. It won't affect it, but it'll just give you a better view of like what's happening. So you can see these different areas of overlap, okay? So let's do XOR on all of this. And if you want, you can think about what the result may be. So we have this kind of triangle area in the middle that has multiple overlaps from our circles. So let's do the XOR and see what happens. And this is the result we get. It may be a little unexpected because why is this middle area there when it's overlapping multiple times? And the secret to XOR, which isn't really mentioned that much, in fact, it's not even really mentioned in the Affinity documents, but it's the way XOR works just mathematically. If you have an even number of layers overlapping, there'll be an empty result. But if you have an odd number of layers overlapping, you'll still have something in that fill area. As you can see in this middle area, we basically have the three circles overlapping. We have the red, the green, and, and the blue here. And these other areas, we only have two circles overlapping. So the areas with the two are gonna be empty. The areas with the three are going to be filled. If that doesn't make any sense, you can kind of just ignore it, but just know that basically when you have multiple objects overlapping, the XOR results aren't just gonna take out all the common area. They may be parts where there's, they still leave in some of the area. And finally, we'll look at divide. Now divide doesn't have an operation in the compound shapes, but I'll just briefly go over it here just for completeness. So what divide is gonna do is it's going to cut up our shapes along the, the perimeters of all the shapes. So again, easiest to just show an example. I click the last one here called divide. And at a glance, it doesn't seem like it did much, but what it actually does is it, is it allows us to pull our shapes apart like that. Okay, so, and divide's actually a really useful operation when you want to kind of use a shape to split something else. But again, there's no compound operation for divide, so this is kind of the last we'll talk about it in the video. Okay, so now we know how the Boolean operations work, but as you saw, they were destructive. They were hard to edit after we actually made the change. So what if we don't want that to happen? Well, now we can talk about compounds. So let me give an example here. I'll put two shapes on the screen. Let's just say, a, again, a circle and square. Now before I would just click on this button, but what you can do is if you select both of them, I'm going to hold Alt and click on Add. And it looks the same, but unlike before, what happened is now I have this compound group created over here. And what happened is the bottom shape is kind of our base and the top shape has this little button next to it, which allows us to choose the Boolean operation. Now it's Add by default. Now so far it looks the same, but the nice thing about this tool is that I can actually move my shape around and it will still preserve the, the shapes themselves. So I still have this ellipse. I can change the way the ellipse is. I can resize it. And it's totally non-destructive. It gets a little more meaningful when you add more stuff to your compound shape. For example, if I had a triangle, now it's outside of my compound group. I could actually drag it in and by default, it's the add operation again. I could do subtract. So if I move my triangle over, my triangle is subtracting from my compound. And the way compounds work is they work from the bottom up. So the rectangle is our base, and that's going to apply each operation going up the stack. So our ellipse is being added, then our triangle is being subtracted. So if I move the triangle over here, you can see it's cutting out of the circle and the square. If I move the triangle below, it's going to have a different effect because now the ellipse is being added on top. So the ellipse is actually covering the triangle. Now, as you notice, the whole shape is one color. That's by design. The compound shape, the color of it is defined up here, so I can change it to whatever I want. I can also make it a gradient if I wanted to. So let's try that. Something like that. And the transparency tool, or the fill tool, and all these things, they, they work on it. And we can also do strokes. So if I get go to stroke, I can apply it to the whole compound here. And if you like to do use the styles, those also work. And as I go through, this is all fully editable. If Again, if I move my triangle around, it's still going to cut out non-destructively. 
Now, one of the coolest things about compounds is they work with text too. So here I have another box and let's put some text here. Now I can select both these things together. I can hit the, let's do subtract. That sounds kind of interesting. And the text is subtracted out. So on my right, you can see the text is one of the layers and it's fully editable. I select it. And I can resize it. Now I think one of the coolest effects here is actually XOR. So let me change the setting to XOR. Now, when XOR is in the middle of something, it looks the same, but when we take it out, it looks kind of interesting, I think. So this is the XOR effect happening. XOR is really kind of cool when you have like two shapes and you want one to be like the mirror image of another or to kind of invert something. So that's what's happening here. Here's another example of XOR I have. I kind of made this spiral shape here. And then I can do like a, let's say a black square. And if I select both of them, I'll put the curve on top. I'll do XOR. And if I make this curve bigger, now you can see it has like, it's kind of like opposite colors as it goes out. So there's lots of effects like that you can create. And finally, something you can do is make compounds of compounds themselves. So let's do something here like this. Let's get a little more color going. And I have a square. Let's put some type of star in the middle. And I'll subtract it. Whoops. I forgot to click Alt that time. So if I hold Alt and click Subtract. All right, now we have our compound. And I'll just center these things. If I select the whole compound, this is one compound. What I can do is I can make another compound. Maybe I have a circle in there. I'll cut out a circle. So now that I have both of these, I can actually make a compound of the two of them together. So let's say I want something like this. I select both my compounds and I can just say, let's see, add, alt. And I have a new compound, which is the sum total of the individual compounds. So if you're building up something more complicated, this is definitely an option here. So to give you an idea of how to like practically use compounds, I'll just give a quick demo here. I found this image on Pinterest. It was a key. I thought it looked kind of interesting. So let's try to build it with compounds. So I'll just start with the main body here. And it looks like the top is some kind of ellipse. So let's draw an ellipse. Probably our main body can be a little narrower. We don't need super high accuracy here, but ballpark, let's see what we're going for. I'll center it. And I'll start making our compound. So I have both these selected. I'll do Alt. Add is where we'll start. And we have our compound going. Looks like we need to cut out two circles in the middle here. So I'll do a one circle. So I have one circle. You can create shapes outside and then drag them into your compound. So I'll select this and I'll do subtract. And I'll just duplicate it. See, I'll center both of these together so they're even. Okay, so we got that part going. Let's see what else is happening here. Down at the bottom, we have kind of the, the main part of the key. I know everyone's dying for the heart. Uh, so we have a heart. And again, I have to move these into our compound. Just rotate the heart here. And I'll set it to subtract. That looks good. Now one thing I can also do is I want to create this little divot. So this part here is a rectangle. I'm just going to convert it to a curve. Go layer, convert to curves, and I'll just uh, put a couple little notches in it. If I line these up equally, and this bottom one, I'll just shift down a little bit to give it a little cut out there. And you can keep going with this as, in as much detail as you want. Um, I could add some corners to this to make, I can make it a little more rounded. I could add more of some type of gaps here, make these guys rounded also. And now since this whole thing is a compound, I can also add a stroke to it. So let's add some type of stroke. Maybe I'll make it a little darker there. We can give it some noise if we wanted to, like a little bit of texture. So if you double click uh, the opacity settings, they let you add noise. Can add some noise, give it a little bit of a finish there. Can add a slight gradient even if we want. Maybe this could be that, but slightly different. And you can add things like drop shadows to this whole 
uh, compound path. So I'll say out outer shadow. You can see there's a shadow there. So really it's just about how much details you want to keep going and adding. And if you want to add more details, you could do so. Like if you want to cut out additional things, or if you want to like put stuff on top of it and just have this be your basic shape below. But this kind of gives you a quick example of how to create something using compounds. So that's an overview of compounds. If you find yourself using Boolean operations in a destructive way, maybe compounds are something you want to consider to help preserve your work and make it easier to make changes later on. If you have any questions about this feature, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video.